Um, now, uh, let's talk about generalized Kummer varieties. Uh, I just recall uh, that uh, the definition, so A is an abelian surface. And then we have uh, the Albanese map from the Hilbert scheme of points on this abelian surface into the surface. And uh, the generalized coma is in just the fiber. So uh, actually, um, about these varieties, we know quite a lot uh, about their motives. Uh, so these are results of Di Cataldo and Miglierini. Uh, they have described um, Chao motives of um, Hilbert schemes of points uh, of surfaces uh, for arbitrary quasi-projective surface S. I just wanted to briefly explain how they do it. So let's take this quasi-projective surface and uh, let's consider its uh, symmetric power. So uh, the symmetric power of this uh, surfaces as uh, around brackets n, and it has a natural stratification. Um, it has a natural stratification. <coughs> which can be described as follows. So if I fix a partition of n, uh, so let me write it in the following form. Uh, so I like this. So this notation means just that, yes. So this is in Chao motifs. Uh, okay. Yes. Right. Thanks. Uh, so. Um, Uh, that's a partition of uh, n. Uh, L will be the length of this partition. Uh, yes, uh, right. Uh, what? Sorry? N is the same n. Well, I mean, I copied this notation from, it's not invented by me, I'm sorry. So if you don't like it, then just forget about it. So I just mean that I have new one times one, uh, new two times two, and so on. <coughs> uh, so we consider a stratum, uh, I denoted by S new. Uh, which consists of uh, cycles. Uh, so this uh, variety parameterizes uh, cycles on S, right? So uh, the points can have different multiplicities and we consider the locus of uh, cycles uh, with exactly uh, new one points, so new I points of multiplicity i. So these are just cycles of the following form, x1 plus and so on plus x mu1 plus 2x mu1 plus 1 and so on and uh, up to m. So if we take its closure then uh, uh, the closure uh, admits a natural normalization. So uh, there is a, uh, so obviously uh, uh, there is a map from the product of 
some symmetric powers of S into the closure of this stratum. Uh, so uh, I take just the symmetric power uh, S nu1 times and so on times uh, the symmetric power nu n. So I'll denote it by S nu. So these are these first new one points, then the second factor here gives so the second collection of points and so on. And then uh, we just take the uh, fiber product. So we take the uh, Hilbert Chow morphism S n with square brackets. So this is the resolution of singularities, and here we have this map which is a normalization of the stratum. And here uh, I put some variety gamma nu, which is a fiber product with reduced structure. So one can uh, compute the dimension of this cycle gamma nu. It will be uh, n plus the length of the partition. And then uh, pulling back and pushing forward, we get a, a map on uh, Chow groups. So Q nu lower star, E nu upper star maps Chow groups of this product of symmetric powers into Chow groups of uh, my a uh, Hilbert scheme of points with some shift uh, in degree. And then Di Cataldo and Miglarini, uh, they prove that this actually induces an isomorphism of Chow motifs. the category of uh, Chow motifs. Right, so they have quotient singularities and since I work with Chow groups, yeah, so I forgot to write rational coefficients here. Then these Chow groups are well defined and actually one can also just define one can work with such quotient by finite groups as with smooth varieties, actually, in terms of child groups with rational coefficients. So all these pullbacks and push forwards are well defined. And the motif of, of a quotient by a finite group is just the G invariant part of the motif of this smooth variety. Yeah, which we. Uh, so. Um, in particular, if I now take my uh, abelian surface, then I did use that the motif of this uh, Hilbert scheme is abelian. Mm. Because uh, here I would have some symmetric uh, powers of A, and there is a, uh, uh, so they are isomorphic to uh, quotients of just the usual powers by uh, the action of the symmetric group. Mm. So these are new I's. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so here this is also new I. So the sum, uh, sorry, so uh, this is new, the sum over all partitions, and uh, yeah, so new in brackets means the product of the symmetric powers. 
like this. So what I have here, uh, these are products of these quotients, and uh, they are all abelian because they are sub-motifs in the motifs of abelian varieties. And also, so now we, we want to pass to the fiber of the Albanese map. So that's not probably so obvious, but it can be done, and essentially uh, the same proof uh, can be uh, um, can be done, and we can deduce that the motif of this uh, generalized kuma is also abelian. So now uh, I want to uh, use this to prove similar thing uh, about deformations of this uh, generalized kuma. Uh, so, but so well, essentially, so what you can do is. Um, Uh, you can you can see the Albanese map and no um, so of course there is uh, here also uh, the Hilbert Chow morphism so we just consider the fiber the fiber of this map and we are just Yes, yeah, so we just produce the same kind of diagrams, and it still works for each stratum. Yes, uh, so they essentially they have more general results about arbitrary semi-small resolutions. So it can be generalized in different ways. Actually, uh, in particular, it works for uh, generalized Kuma varieties. Uh, but now, uh, if we have a deformation, so by a deformation I mean a smooth projective morphism over some con connected quasi-projective base. So a uh, smooth uh, projective morphism and B is quasi-projective uh, connected. Uh, and I have two points in B such that the fiber over the first point is x and the fiber over the second point is uh, my generalized Kuma variety for some uh, abelian surface. So then I want to prove that uh, this fiber also has abelian motif. So uh, I cannot deform this construction. So when I, when I deform the generalized Kuma, it is no longer a generalized Kuma variety. So uh, there will be no Hilbert Chow morphism and uh, uh, I think that it's not possible to deform uh, this construction. But uh, so we, we need something more deformation invariant. And then uh, there is a general uh, construction which relates cohomology of uh, hyperkeller manifolds and uh, cohomology of abelian varieties. So this is called Kuga Setai construction. So here x can be arbitrary hyperkeller manifold. Uh, well, I mean by hyperkeller, I mean as usual. I think at this conference uh, the uh, simple hyperkeller, so or IHS if you want. Uh, so I will denote by V its degree two cohomology with rational coefficients. Q will be the Bavil Bogomolov Fujiki form. So uh, the dimension of X will be 2n. And uh, so let us again consider the uh, Lefschetz operators. So we have some homology class 
in V, and we say that it has Lefschetz property. If uh, we have uh, the usual isomorphisms. Uh, if it has a Lefschetz property, then uh, we get a Lefschetz triple, uh, SL2 triple. And uh, we generate a sub a Lie sub algebra in the endomorphisms of, of the cohomology by all such triples. So G tot, total Lie algebra of X is a Lie sub algebra and generated by all such SL2 triples. So it can be uh, described explicitly uh, uh, as follows. We consider the uh, corresponding Mukai uh, extension of, of V. So we define uh, V tilde to be V direct sum with a hyperbolic plane. And uh, so Q tilde will be the corresponding quadratic form on this vector space. such that its restriction to V is Q. And the hyperbolic plane, yes, so it has its uh, quadratic form and also uh, there is a grading. So V tilde is graded as follows. Uh, so V in degree uh, two and the hyperbolic plane is spanned by two isotropic vectors of degree zero and four. Uh, then um, there is a theorem by Verbitsky and Leyengaluns. That the total Lie algebra is actually isomorphic to uh, orthogonal algebra of this Mukai extension. Uh, and they are uh, isomorphic as graded Lie algebras. So G total has, of course, natural grading because uh, homo uh, coming from the grading of homology. And so you can notice that uh, this implies in particular that G total uh, has only components of degree minus two, zero, and two, uh, which is easy to see. Uh, if you explicitly describe graded components of this Lie algebra. So um, uh, we have this Lie algebra action on cohomology and uh, also another part of this theorem is that uh, the subalgebra, the orthogonal of V itself, so it's a subalgebra, so it acts uh, on the cohomology by derivations. So that's, let's say, uh, this is uh, the first part of the theorem. This is the second part of the theorem. And also, uh, let me put uh, as the third part of the theorem the following thing. So uh, uh, one can prove that actually the Hodge structures on the cohomology are induced by this action of this Lie algebra. So there exists an element which acts as a veil operator. Uh, Hodge structure on H. So uh, this just means that W restricted to H, P, Q is multiplication by square root of minus one times p minus q. Uh, well, so uh, this has some consequences. Uh, in particular, 
uh, since uh, the orthogonal algebra acts on uh, age by derivations, uh, we get a representation of the spin group. So corollary as it exists, a uh, representation of the spin group of V. Uh, in the automorphisms of this algebra, uh, the cohomology algebra of X, and here uh, I have this P. So uh, these are automorphisms of uh, the algebra. that preserve all Pantheagin classes. Yeah, okay, so as any smooth manifold, X has some uh, characteristic classes called Pantheagin classes and I want to consider this sub-algebra, uh, sub-subgroup that fixes all of them. So why do we have such a representation? Of course, uh, spin acts on the automorphisms of this algebra that follows from the second part. But then, <clears throat> so all the Pantheagin classes, they are of Hodge type PP or no deformations of X. Uh, that's uh, easy to see because um, there will be always the current classes of the tangent bundle and they are always of type PP. Uh, so uh, actually uh, they will be fixed, uh, so somehow they, so this W, this small W uh, acts trivially on them for all such complex structures, so for all W. So actually uh, this uh, representation of the spin group, uh, it uh, maps into the automorphism that preserve all, all Pontiagin classes. And so, uh, now, um, yeah, so uh, what is the Kuga Sataki construction? So I want to embed cohomology of X into uh, cohomology of some uh, abelian variety. So I can do this as follows. So uh, we define the Kuga Sataki Hodge structure of weight one. Uh, so for this, uh, as a rational vector space, I take the Clifford algebra of B. And then I need to define the PQ decomposition. Uh, so uh, I will define W10 to be the right ideal generated by V20 in this Clifford algebra uh, in its complexification. Yeah? So W complexified is just the Clifford algebra of the complexified vector space, and so then V embeds into the Clifford algebra canonically, and then I, I take just the right ideal generated by this V20 uh, one-dimensional subspace. Since it is isotropic, this will be a non-trivial ideal in WC, and the dimension is half of the dimension of this Clifford algebra. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, zero 01 is the conjugate. Uh, so this is uh, a Hodge structure of some uh, abelian variety up to isogeny. If I fix the lattice, then I get an actual abelian variety. And this W uh, is uh, polarizable uh, if X is projective. So yeah, actually, in general, it's just a Hodge structure of a torus. But if X was projective, then I get a, an actual abelian variety. Okay, so then um, here is uh, the key uh, theorem. Kurnosov, uh, uh, myself, and Vermitsky. Uh, so, uh, this W, of course, it has a structure of uh, SOV module, right? Because SOV, it acts on the Clifford algebra. So it acts on W. But now uh, I claim that there exists a, a structure of SOV tilde Q tilde module on the exterior algebra of W. 
that extent the SOVQ module structure. And moreover, uh, there exists an uh, integer m such that, uh, so there exists an integer m and an embedding of this OV tilde Q tilde modules. So uh, one of them is microhomology. Uh, well, I need to put some uh, shift uh, uh, in degree uh, here. And yeah, well, this is with, with the rational coefficients and it embeds into the exterior algebra of W also with some shift on de of degree. Um, uh, but uh, I need to take several copies of W. So this exterior algebra is just a tensor product of several copies of this one. Well, M big enough, I, I can always embed. So essentially, just uh, uh, we prove that this SO V tilde Q tilde module gives me a representation of the spin group which is faithful. And then you can uh, check that if you have such a faithful representation, then any representation will be embedded into big enough tensor power of this, of this one. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, it, since uh, my Hodge structures are induced by the action of this algebra, I get also uh, an embedding of Hodge structures. Also get an embedding of Hodge structures. Let's call it mu i from H i plus 2n. into a lambda i plus 2d. Uh, so here I have some uh, tate twists and this d here actually is some, uh, so this is the dimension of this vector space w essentially up to some uh, multiple. Okay, so uh, microhomology is now of abelian type. So uh, in the uh, category of Hodge structures, I have this embedding for my variety X, for any hypercalibre variety X. And now to leave this thing to the category of some motifs, so Andre motifs or Deligne motifs, I, I, I need somehow to prove that this embedding is given by some motivated cohomology class. Uh, yeah, so here I want to, to, to use deformation theory. Uh, so to use deformation theory, I actually need to apply this Fugas Sataki construction in families. Uh, apply Fugas Sataki uh, to my projective family from purely X to B. So for this, I actually need to construct now a family of abelian varieties and an embedding of variations of Hodge structures. Uh, so I need to define this family of abelian varieties so that my maps are equivalent with respect to the uh, action of the fundamental group of B. Uh, so um, for this, I need to know how monodromy acts on the cohomology of X, right? Uh, because, uh, yeah, so I need to get some equivalent maps. So monodromy action. Of course, I, I would like my monodromy to, to act via this spin group. Because uh, then my spin group acts on W, so I, I get, uh, yeah, I can, I can define, if, if the action of the fundamental group of B factors through the spin group, then I can, by this factorization by spin group, I can act on the, on, on the right hand side. And so I'll get my family of abelian varieties. Uh, so that's not always the case, but that is the case up to uh, passing to some finite covering of the, of the base. So actually, yeah, so what do we want to do? So we have this uh, spin, uh, which is, uh, uh, there is this representation. So I have pi one of my base. And so uh, 
the action on the cohomology actually. So uh, if we look at the definition of this action, then uh, we'll see that it is induced by the action of the mapping class group of X. So the mapping class group is the group of diffeomorphisms of X modular diffeomorphisms isotropic to the identity. All diffeomorphisms fix the Pontryagin classes, so I have uh, such a representation, and so I want to lift, uh, lift it here. So what I claim is that there exists some finite index subgroup, and uh, a map like this, which makes this triangle commutative, and so if it is of finite index, I can just take the preimage in pi one of the base, and this will be of finite index in pi one of the base. So I'll get some finite covering, so B prime, for example. So this is of finite index. So let me explain how to prove that I can find such a subgroup in the mapping class group. So uh, for this, I, I do the following thing. So I fix uh, two arithmetic subgroups, gamma uh, in the group of automorphisms of the cohomology of X, uh, so sorry, so that was, that was this one. Uh, so. Uh, Inside of these automorphisms of the homology of X, I obviously have some uh, arithmetic subgroup uh, that fixes the integral homology classes. So I'll denote it like this. And then I, I, I find even smaller arithmetic subgroup, which is torsion free. And also, I take some torsion-free arithmetic subgroup in the spin group. <coughs> so uh, then I look at the following diagram. So I have the mapping class group. I have this automorphism of the cohomology. Of course, all diffeomorphisms preserve the integral homology classes, so I actually have this map. And so here is my gamma. Uh, so now, uh, if I have an automorphism that preserves all Pontryagin classes, I can restrict it to H2. And uh, it's not, uh, well, so one can prove that uh, if it fixes all Pontryagin classes, then actually it also preserves the bavir bogomolov form. Uh, if it fixes all Pontryagin classes, and if we, uh, that's uh, automorphism of the cohomology algebra, since the bavir bogomolov form is defined uh, essentially in terms of the algebra structure, then, well, one can check that uh, the action on H2 preserves this, uh, this form. And so actually I have a map into the orthogonal group of the bavir bogomolov form. And moreover, uh, one can check that this map has finite kernel. So this, this, this has finite kernel. Uh, so then I take this composition, and since gamma was torsion-free, I actually get an embedding in the orthogonal group. So on the other hand, I have the uh, spin group. 
So it uh, maps here, it also has a, a finite kernel, so the kernel is Z2. And here is my gamma prime, so which is also torsion free in the spin group, so it also embeds in the orthogonal group like this. And then I take their intersection. Okay. So uh, if I map an arithmetic subgroup into the orthogonal group, one can check that the, the image will also be an arithmetic subgroup there. Uh, so the images of this gamma prime and gamma here are arithmetic subgroups. So the intersection is of finite index in each of them. So this is a finite uh, index uh, and uh, this is also a finite index. And by definition, so uh, actually I get some finite index subgroup here and uh, it's free image in, mapping, in the mapping class group will be called MC prime. So this is rho and then this is the pre image. Yeah. So this MC prime, uh, so it's action factors by spin just by construction. Okay, so that's almost the end of the proof. So now, uh, so I take my family. So uh, yeah, so let's finish the proof of this main theorem. So I take this family of hypercalibre varieties over B. So I can now uh, assume that I replace B with B prime with a finite covering. It will be, uh, it will still be a quasi projective. So I can assume that mm, the, the action of the fundamental group factors through, uh, through the spin group. And so I, I produce a family of abelian varieties. Uh, A over B, well, this is the family of Alcugas attack and billion varieties. And uh, my theorem over there, it gives me an embedding of the variations of Hodge structures. Let's call them mu i bar. So they are also can be seen as global sections of some local system over the base, of course. So r uh, to n plus 2d uh, psi lowest tau of q, where this map is just the fiber product of the of the other two. So psi goes from x times a into B. Sorry? Oh yeah, so well, I mean the multiplicity, I, I just defined this abelian varieties with... Yeah, right, yes. So this M works for somehow, one M works for any deformations of uh, some fixed hypercalibre manifold. So. So this A here is just, uh, so it is defined as, as um, <coughs> somehow, yeah, um, well, let me say more accurately how to define it. So I have this W uh, direct sum M times. So it's a rational vector space. So then I have to fix some lattice in it to get a family of tori. I, of course, have to fix some lattice, which is also uh, invariant under the, uh, uh, the action of the fundamental group. And I can always find such a lattice because actually, my fundamental group acts via some arithmetic subgroup of spin, right? Uh, so uh, this arithmetic subgroup always preserves some lattice. So I can uh, always uh, fix some lattice, uh, which is not canonical, of course, but then I actually get some family of tori. 
and they will be also polarized because so I mentioned somewhere that these Kuga Sataki Tore are polarized if X is projective, but actually also these polarizations are all spin invariant. So you can find a spin invariant polarization. Uh, so uh, this way I get the family of abelian varieties. And so now uh, somehow the uh, key point is that so now I have this section of some local system of the base. So I, I look at, at one point of the base. So I take B2 and look at the fiber of this section, at the point B2. So it's an element of H to N plus 2D, uh, so cohomology of the fiber, which is uh, Kn. So over B2, I had this generalized Kuma uh, times uh, some abelian variety again. So curly A, uh, fiber over B2. Uh, so with rational coefficients. And that's a Hodge class because it's, a, it's an embedding of Hodge structure, so it's given by a Hodge class. But it is also motivated uh, because this variety is uh, of abelian type. Its motif is abelian. So, uh, so this is a motivated cohomology class. And so then uh, there is a deformation principle uh, which tells me that if I have a global section of some local system uh, like this, so the, uh, the variation of Hodge structures, and if I have a, a global section of it, uh, and if I know that over one point the class is motivated, then it will be motivated over all other points. So um, by deformation principle, this mu I, I over the point B1, which is now H2 n plus 2D of the fiber over the other point, which is now X times some abelian variety over B1. So this will also be uh, motivated. And so that's it, because now I have this class which gives me an embedding of the uh, corresponding uh, Andrea motifs. Okay. Okay, so just uh, I can also mention that uh, this fact that some motif is abelian, it implies more conjectures. Actually, there are more conjectures. So we proved that uh, uh, all Hodge classes are absolute, but there are actually more conjectures about all sorts of different cohomology theories. For example, there is a Manfred-Tate conjecture, which is a comparison between the Manfred-Tate group and the um, group uh, which you obtain if you consider a logic cohomology. Uh, so if you consider the elliptic cohomology and you take the action of the Galois group, you take its image and you take its the risky closure. So you take the connected algebraic subgroup over QL. And then you also take tens as a Manfred tail group by QL. And so these two groups, uh, it's difficult to compare them in general. And to the conjecture, the Manfred tail conjecture says that these two groups should coincide, actually. And so actually in this case uh, of uh, uh, Hyperkeller varieties, it is known that uh, there is inclusion between these two groups in one direction always. Uh, but if we prove that the motif is abelian, then uh, it also follows that there is other inclusion. So actually the manfred tate conjecture is also, uh, also follows from this result about the, uh, that the motif is abelian. Okay, so uh, that's it. Actually, I don't remember. I have to check. Uh, but it's uh, actually it's not quite true. So it is there is one inclusion only in uh, even degree for even degree homology. For all degree homology, it's not known. Uh, 
this is the argument for the formation of the schemes of P3, just the same. Uh, so it uh, no, it was proved before using some results of Markman. So Hilbert schemes are a bit easier because there are no. But we can calculate the same. Yes, sure. So this argument works for Hilbert schemes of uh, points on, and uh, yes, as Giovanni just told me that it should also work for uh, OG6 type, because we know for, that for some special OG6 the motif should also be abelian. So the same, yeah, the same strategy will work. For any family where we have just one uh, one uh, 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 um, particular fiber with abelian motif. Yeah, Kugosataki works for all any hypercalar manifold without any. You can try to apply it. So we don't know, I think we don't really know any examples where this algebra is explicitly described apart from hyperkeller manifolds and tori. But do you need the explicit description? What do you need support Well, it is some representation theory. It's hard to say how to construct this embedding if you just have some what is known is that it is reductive, for example, but then how would you construct it? Yeah, you know, it's not so clear how to generalize this.